Good morning. This is Zach with Lynn Bend Community College. Today we're going to look at a uh, contact uh, shear wave transducer and a wedge. This is a 70 degree wedge. It says 70 degree and steel, meaning it will generate a 70 degree refracted shear wave in steel. So the uh, first step really is to remove the transducer, which is this portion here. And, and just guarantee that the coupling between the transducer and the wedge itself is, uh, is adequate to remove the air. And the coupling between here can dry out. And if it's been in the toolbox for some time, uh, it's definitely something that you want to check. And uh, at, at minimum, I would say that we want to check this, you know, a few in the morning and, and, and different times throughout the day. So. The transducer itself is a is a 2.25 megahertz. It has an active element of 0.625 by 0.625 inches, so it's a square element. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, tilt the camera down uh, so I can work on the bench. Um, we have some couplant, which we will use to eliminate the air between the transducer and the wedge. You can see that this coupling is safe for, for dolphins because there's a dolphin on the front. So, um, And you guys know the only way I like dolphin is on white bread with mayonnaise. So um, we might have a, something like that later. But for now, we're going to go ahead and make sure this transducer is properly coupled to the wedge. So let me tilt the camera down and uh, we'll take a look at that. There we go. So I've, I've pre-loosened these two screws that hold the transducer onto the wedge. So I'm just going to back those the rest of the way out. And then uh, we want to, uh, once it's removed, to wipe any of the old coupling off. And this one is pretty, pretty damp, but uh, since I have it off, I'm going to put a new layer of coupling. So I'll clean the old coupling off the wedge and also off the, uh, the transducer itself. So I, I hope you can see there's a, a gray, a different a gray inside the black there. That's the active element. And we said earlier that the element itself is 0.625 by 0.625. So it's a square element. Um, and again, this is 2.25 megahertz. So Let's apply a little bit of couplant to the face. We don't need too much, just uh, that's probably more than enough. And then I'm going to go ahead and just spread that out slightly with my with my finger. And I really got probably uh, too much, but too much is better than not enough. So I'm going to put this onto the face of the wedge, and I just want to try and do that in one motion. And then I want to stage tighten uh, the the screws. So stage tighten, I mean, uh, give give one a little bit. If I could get it lined up here, so I want to tighten one uh, partially, and then move to the the next one and and take it in a little bit. So. And that way I can apply uniform pressure and, and eliminate the air from between these two surfaces. So when this is done uh, properly, you can see as soon as I finish, I don't want to get these too tight because it is possible to um, strip, strip these threads and or crack the lucite wedge. Um, so you can see, uh, hopefully in there, I have a nice uniform layer of coupling coming out and same on this side. So it's just an indicator to me that, that I have, uh, secured the transducer to the wedge and, uh, likely we'll try and get that out of there. I don't want to get it all, all gummed up and, and disgusting. So anyway, uh, so my transducer is secured to the wedge. I've eliminated any air between the transducer and the wedge. And uh, the next step would be to, uh, to begin our calibration. Uh, and in future videos, we'll look at 
calibration using wedges like this on the IIW block and also uh, on the NAPSHIP block, which are some of the standards we have here at the school. So um, we'll s anyway, so in the future episodes, we will uh, take a look at that. But for now, there's a properly coupled transducer and it's uh, been attached to the wedge, so we're ready to go. All right, have a great day. Thank you.